Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking. I'm talking about a book which I've reviewed on a number of occasions now. It's currently called Shareholders' Rights. It's published by uh, Sweden Maxwell and is written by Robin Hollington. It's a really excellent book and I've given it the title for the internet uh, reviews that I've produced, Sharing a Good Read with the 5th edition because the new edition has come out as a result of the recent Companies Act uh, legislation. And when I had reviewed the fourth edition of this book for the Barrister uh, magazine in 2004, we were obviously awaiting the new legislation at that time. Obviously the fifth edition has come out pretty quickly, um, and it's now called Shareholders' Rights by uh, Robin Hollington QC. I think it's arrived at just the right time, because many would-be investors uh, need to know what the changes are that have taken place to the uh, Companies Act itself. And obviously there have been some changes. Um, obviously the Companies Act 2006 is currently being digested. It's the largest piece of legislation we've ever had. And what in fact Robin has done, I met him when he launched this book at uh, Dr Johnson's house. He's a charming man. What he's done is he's presented the work to highlight the way in which the law on shareholders' rights has developed. And therefore it's clearly the leading authority in its field today, even in its expanded uh, form. Obviously I've not got the book here, but just a picture of it. It's relatively slim, nice green cover. Um, it's also, in my view, the one place to turn to for students studying company law. Uh, so they can find out what the law says. And you've actually got Hollington's quite useful comments which are made. And he obviously practices in this particular field and is very authoritative. It's a great book, of course, if you want to go for a first, because you've got the heavyweight authoritative nature of it, uh, which will impress, I think, academics. Um, just to re remind you, of course, the original book was called Minority Shareholders' Rights, but we've moved on a little bit from that within the development of what I still call as company law, but it's more like corporate um, responsibility today. What the author does, though, is he covers and examines the implications of some of the leading cases um, since the 2004 edition, including Reed Chime Corporation, and a number of other cases like the uh, Titanium Electro Products case. The structure of the book remains relatively the same in some respects, but he's had to make some changes to take account of obviously the new legislation. It now contains 14 chapters and two appendices and begins with a, a splendid introduction to set the uh, approach with broad principles, including the meaning of uh, separate legal personality and so on. In fact, you've got all the basics, including Foss and Harbottle and so forth. Obviously, as you know, the concept of current terminology for this type of work is called corporate governance rather than company law. Obviously, it's just the way of expressing it at the moment, but we all know what it really means. Forwards, of course, in the to the past editions of this uh, book have included people like Lord Hoffman, who um, actually commented on the first edition with a generous sum uh, summary when he said it's the emanation of minority shareholders as a recent event. And obviously you can see from those early days how things have changed. The work obviously moved on considerably when Mr Justice Hart made comments in the third edition when he said that the prediction of when an English court will protect the rights of minority shareholders presents, quote, many interesting and difficult problems, quite, quite right. Then by 1999, which is ten years ago, Mr Justice Hart acknowledged that Hollington had actually increased the number of newly reported cases and describes the book now as an, in, an indispensable tool of the litigation lawyer. And he recommends it as an invaluable aid both for litigators and ADR practitioners. And obviously he's right. And since then, the book has gone from strength to strength. So for the fourth edition, 
we had Lady Justice Arden um, commenting that the uh, book um, is written in, in such a way that it is not so much about how to run company meetings or appoint and remove directors or matters of that kind as about how to manage disputes and of course that's very much the direction in which the judiciary has gone. Uh, as I say there's a great deal of information but what's in it for 2008-2009? Well it's refreshing to read Robin's work uh, in my view. You don't necessarily have to agree with some of the points that are being put forward but he does actually cover the ground I think with tremendous lucidity and he's an expert, let's make no mistake about it, and he describes a number of cases like O'Neill and Phillips in the House of Lords in a, a particular way, saying of course, as, as does happen in the common law, that many of these decisions are decided on their own particular facts. He also covers, I think, an area which is very important at the moment, foreign jurisdiction and section 994 matters. Obviously, we, we look at the foreign element in some uh, detail. There are, of course, broad principles which he has aimed to produce throughout this work, and in fact, he does that eminently well. He doubts, having looked at what he said, that the cultural change in a company's operations will make any difference in practice in the future, but he actually says we'll have to wait and uh, see. And it's certainly going to be an academic issue for practitioners for some time to come. So, to sum up, what I think this current 5th edition does is it succeeds in blending the 17 broad principles of managing the shareholder's position within a company with a precision and an ease which will benefit all who read it. I'm sure they'll find the new commentaries, of course, which have been added for the 2006 Act, invaluable as we begin to get to grips with the uh, consolidated legislation and the places um, that directors' duties now find themselves in the new statutory footing. I think it's an excellent um, complementary book now to what we've already got, and I think he explains everything with a lot of ease. So it's well worth reading. Thank you very much, Robin. Goodbye.